Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to another COVID-19 daily global call. My name is Sri Srinivasan, and I'm the Marshall Loeb Visiting Professor of Digital Innovation at Stony Brook University School of Journalism. I'm honored to host this global conversation every day. This is show 31. That means we've been on lockdown in Manhattan for 31 straight days. Many of you have said how much you enjoy this show, how much you learn from it. One of you called this a lifeline. Well, I want to tell you this is my lifeline. I get more out of it than anybody does. I'd love for you to go to my Facebook, my Twitter, my YouTube, my LinkedIn, and share this with the world right now. Whatever platform you're on right now, share it, retweet it, let people gather so that they can hear this Sunday night positivity. Every Sunday, we specialize in positivity on Sunday night, 9 p.m. Eastern. If you are catching this on a later schedule, don't worry, you can watch the whole thing. And of course, we are live multiple times a week, every day. Our next show is 9 p.m. tomorrow. We have Professor Hitendra Wadwa, who's an expert on leadership in crisis. He has taught more than 10,000 MBA students at Columbia B School, as well as thousands of executives at Fortune 500 companies. He's gonna share his secrets tomorrow, 9 p.m. Eastern. We have other great shows coming up in the days ahead. First, let me tell you a little bit about the show we're going to do tonight. We are specializing in Sunday night positivity. That means we talk to folks who are experts in positivity or are positive, purposeful people, or both. A great way to prep for the week. We're gonna meet Courtney Pulitzer, who's at C Pulitzer. She's a writer and creative entrepreneur based out of Tucson, but formerly a New Yorker and formerly a Parisian. We're also going to meet M.R. Rangaswamy at M.R. Sandhill, Mr. Sandhill. He's founder of Indiaspora.org and Chalo Give, which is doing so much good work at the moment, and you'll hear from both of them. Please tag a friend somewhere, somebody in the world could benefit from something positive right now. And here's your chance to tag them or share right now so that they can come in. You can use your Twitter, you can use your WhatsApp, any way that you can get to your friends to tell them that we're live would be great. Jonathan Borstein is here, always the first one. Greetings from the East Village. Arlene says 31 days feels more like 301. And Joe Apayo is here, Joe, from Cumming, Georgia. Happy Easter and Passover to all. Joe says, hey, Bill, hope you're recovered. Look at this. Bill Ritter is here, folks, the big time anchor in New York, who was our guest just a few days ago. In fact, just a week ago, he was our guest here and he was recovering at that time from COVID-19. We hope he is fully back. I wanna show you the picture we used for him that day. It was such a wonderful evening. I hope you can uh, go back in my archives, go to youtube.com slash net and you can watch that conversation with Bill Ritter. The fact that Bill is here shows that he's doing great. Bill, we love you. And Bill says, I am doing well. Uh, DBT Coach says hi. Steve says hi from Philadelphia. And Nick Hill's watching from Connecticut. Thank you all for being here and being part of this family. We have had so many people watching around the world. More than 285,000 people saw just the first few episodes, the first 25 episodes, and now we are way over that in the number of shows we've done. So one of the things we have done also is try to make sure we have a global representation of our speakers. So we're looking for speaker suggestions. Please let us know right now. If you have a speaker, please email me, sri at sri.net. We also love sponsors. And I want to tell you about our sponsor, FrontlineFoodTrucks.com, FrontlineFoodTrucks.com. This is from the New York Food Truck Association as it feeds health frontline healthcare workers. You can donate today uh, because they're getting donations from La Colombe, Sweetgreen, Chobani, great brands, but they need cash. So this will support. If you get, go to FrontlineFoodTrucks.com right now and donate, you are supporting three things. This show, you're supporting frontline food trucks, and you're supporting healthcare workers at NYU Langone. This is a great effort, folks. Please donate right now. And you should know that an anonymous third-party donor donated this ad, so not a penny is taken away from the healthcare workers or from the food truck workers. And one final point, 
the founder of Frontline Food Trucks and the president of the Food Truck Association is Bob Goldberg, whose mother, Cheryl Goldberg, was the New York One News parenting reporter for 25 years. So that means she did something right. She raised a son who is so generous and such a leader in his community. And we would love to get more sponsors. We have very reasonable sponsorship rates, as you can see. And we celebrate our sponsors. Maybe you don't have anything you want to sell, but you have a nonprofit you want to support or an individual who has a book, any of those things. We would love your sponsorship so that I can get some actual producers in here. So I'm not speaking and trying to do all this. This is the poor man's way of doing television or on air stuff uh, on our Sunday morning read along. We do it the right way. We have four producers and we do great work there. This morning we had Andrew Hacker join us and Andrew is a political scientist who's written a book called The Downfall of a President and the Party. And he guarantees that President Trump will not win. We will see, but it was a fascinating conversation. And we were joined as we are every Sunday, 8.30 to 10.30 a.m. by a doctor to talk about what is happening in the medical field. And Dr. Lisa Ganju joined us and she was terrific. All right, now we're ready to meet our guests. Uh, we're gonna give them a chance to get camera ready, but these are two of the most positive people I know. Doesn't mean they're always happy. Positivity is different from just being happy and putting on a happy face. Realistically positive is what I love about them. So without further ado, please say hi to Courtney and MR. Hello. Hi, Shree. How are you? Hi, Thank you for being here. We talk offline all the time, but now mm -hmm. we're talking like this. This is so meaningful to me that you would spend your Sunday night here. You guys are on the uh, West Coast, so you're earlier. Yeah. Here we're already nine o'clock. There you're just past six. So mm -hmm. first, let me ask each of you, before I introduce you properly, my always my first question. How are you? Where are you? How are you feeling? What's going on? So Courtney first and then MR. Um, yeah, thanks for having me, Sri. This is uh, really exciting. I'm so excited to see you and, and be with you tonight on this show. I'm feeling great. I'm feeling very positive. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm in Tucson, Arizona uh, for, for tonight <laughs> and probably for a little while longer. And um, yeah, you know, things are, things are going well. We're, we're weathering this, this quarantine okay because we've got a nice little house, nice backyard. We Two little dogs, my son. We were able to. Um, it, it's not so confining as as all my friends in New York. Yeah, New York is now the epicenter of the epicenter yeah. of the United States. Horrifying stats: like we have more cases in New York than any country apart from the United States. That is just shocking for people to understand and see. And when I just walked our dog just before our show, you have two dogs, we have one. She normally goes to the bathroom three or four times, but now she went for a walk twice a day, she gets a walk. And it's so scary because you don't know one mistake you make and you could pay for it with your life. And that's how scary it is, but she's doing our part. So she's being her positive self. Let's go over to MR. Uh, MR, how are you? Where are you? What's happening? Great, uh, Shri. I'm sitting here in my home office in San Francisco. Uh, I wish I could show you the view outside. It's uh, spectacular today. And in order to pump myself up for the show, I uh, went for a walk in the Presidio and down towards Golden Gate Bridge. Uh, had a brisk five-mile walk and uh, ready for your show now. And uh, that's my positive uh, feeling for the day is go out, take a walk, uh, see the birds, hear them chirp, uh, look at the flowers, do all the things you never could do before when you were busy. Yeah, I know what you I know what you mean. Ashok Sharma is watching from Kerala in India. It's very early there. Rose Horowitz says bravo, and she's tweeting at Rose Horowitz 31. So please check that out. Daryl says, welcome back, Bill. Welcome back. Well done. Good. So glad you're doing better. Arlene says, after 31 days, I started to wave back at the screen whenever I was waving. And my dear cousin, Prathana, filmmaker, MR, came with me to go yes. see her film premiere in uh, just outside at the Mill Valley Film Festival. Uh, her film's called The Miseducation of Bindu. I'm so proud of her mm -hmm. and her husband, Ed, and their little kid, Cyrus. Uh, such wonderful people. And one of the things that I learned from MR, everybody should know this, is showing up is so important. I called him from the airport when I landed there that morning and said, 
you want to come see a film? I know you're probably not free. And he said, I'm there. And he showed up. And that's a blessing when people can do that. And he's made that a priority. You're going to hear some of his networking secrets. Uh, and that's one of them. Ooh. Debbie says, uh, Sri, Sunday morning, New York Times read along is great. Andrew Hacker was superb today. Watch the replay. And Pratna says, MF, MR has excellent SF content for what he's doing. Uh, Ashok says, walking is prohibited, prohibited here in Kerala. Imagine that. And Pratna says, hello, everyone. Pratna, put in the uh, information about your movie. I know the film festivals are probably on pause, but where can they see a preview? Where can they see some content out of the film? That would be great. Uh, Shok says hi to all speakers. And Paula is watching. Paula is one of the producers of our terrific Sunday New York Times read along. She's watching from Tallahassee. Folks, tell us what you, where you're watching from, what you're up to, how you're feeling. We want to hear that. And please share this with someone in the world who'd benefit. I'm wearing my Positivity Easter color shirt. This is actually my dad's shirt that he left behind here in New York. He thought he'd be back soon. We meet several times a year. And realistically, I don't think we're going to be, I can get on a plane to India for months. Uh, you know. And can you imagine that first person who coughs on an international flight, they're going to be escorted off the plane with a parachute <laughs> and to go. I, that's one of the things that we have to think about both of you, by the way, don't know this, but part of the reason you're with me here today is because both of you made your mark by convening people. You understood the power of convening. MR does a ton of convening, uh, even now with big conferences. Courtney started cocktails with Courtney, and she'll tell us about mm -hmm. that, I'm sure. She has one of the martini glasses. There it is. Uh, we can't quite see the late yeah. branding, but somewhere there. Yep, you can <laughs> sort of see cocktails with Courtney, and we'll talk about that. Uh, and I, oh, and you, I don't know if you have branding there, uh, but on your on your water bottle, but uh, uh, it's called New Story. But I, I'm drinking, uh, I don't know, the cheap man's uh, cocktail water. Oh, water. Okay. Well, everything everything goes here, folks. Please tag your friends. Please share this with the world. Yeah. Uh, now, let's get into each of your stories. Uh, first, let's go to Courtney. Courtney, tell us about the uh, the work you've been doing. You've you you f first lived in New York. A little bit about New York, a little bit about Paris, because we were supposed to go this spring, and you're going to be my Paris tour guide for a little bit of your story, and then we'll get back to Tucson, and then we'll get to MR. Folks, keep posting your comments. Keep sharing as these folks share their stories. Thanks. Um, okay, well, yeah, so let's see. Here I am in Tucson. I've been here since um, December 2015. Um, moved here when my son was five. And um, before that, I was in Paris, France, where I was. Um, I had the the great opportunity and um, blessed occasion to live there for eight years. Um, I lived there with my husband, who's French, and um, had a baby, and got to um, be a French mommy and and be in the French PTA and and do all of those things. Um, and before that, I was in New York um, where I had my own business in the beginning of the dot-com era when it was just starting up and people were emerging from their offices, figuring out what is this internet and how do we, how do we use it? How do we do it? How do we make money off of it? And I've always been interested in people and the people behind the technology. My um, background is um, acting. I studied to be an actress at NYU Tisch. <laughs> and um, so I'm always interested in the, the personalities and the characters that are um, behind the scenes and doing all of these amazing things. So um, as a result of working in the web, one of my first, um, first jobs was working with Terry Spataro, um, who got me in doing some freelance work for Reebok. Um, and uh, and from there, I the I didn't get the acting bug anymore. I had the internet bug. And um, there was my site, a la 1998. <laughs> <laughs> I've uh, it's sort of like the, the shoemaker. I haven't had a time to really work on my own site since <laughs> for a long time. But um, yeah, I was di designing websites and then I, um, I got to um, start writing for some websites. So uh, the first one I, I worked for was um, at New York and um, those two guys were really great in giving me a, a start in, in what became my career of writing about the people in the internet industry and, and the people behind the scenes, what they were doing. Um, there's some of my news coverage from the the New Yorker where I got to go on an 
vintage Oscar de la Renta gown um, in the Hearst building, Business Week, um, Red Herring. I had some great coverage from my, my cocktail parties, Cocktails with Courtney, which I started um, because I was tired of going out every night covering people in my newsletter. So I said, one night a month, I'm going to stay put and invite my friends to come just hang out with me. And um, because I got in on the in the beginning with a lot of the founders of these emerging dot coms that, that were going IPO, um, it was a great network for people. Um, and they soon um, I had invitations to go do them in in Dallas, Texas and San Francisco and Los Angeles and London and um, did one in Cannes. Uh, so it was a really exciting time. I was, you know, as they say, riding the wave and um we were you know it was a, it was an amazing time of bringing people together bringing the world together and um you know i like to think about that shakespearean quote of all the world's a stage and everyone has their home page um <laughs> <laughs> as a way to really connect people i just find it fascinating and you know it's been a i'll say a silver lining with the with covid 19 you know the people really 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 all going online now and um the desperation to connect you know however we can and um i think it's really powerful so you know i'm, I'm excited to be a part of this show and you know and to to continue that so um what that's else? Great. That was great. Let's show them uh, what's happening over uh, at yeah. LinkedIn. And I want to make sure both of you have also shared on LinkedIn because this yeah. is a, you, you have great networks there. Uh, Anil Nair is checking in from Virginia Beach. Hi, Anil. Carol King says uh, thank you from uh, Tampa Bay, Florida. Krishna is watching from New York. Sunny's from Freehold, New Jersey. Uh, Actually, Krishna is in Queens, New York. He says, Michael, one of my students is watching. My wife is watching in the next room. Great Yay. to hear the positive messages in prep for a busy week. And Francesca is watching from Ardsley, New York. And that's just on that's just on one platform. We are, of course, on multiple platforms. And Ying is watching from Hong Kong. She says, uh, applause for the positive thinking and living. Uh, Courtney, if you wanted to also talk about your current work, we'd love to show them your website uh, and the organization that you're working for now. Yes, yes, absolutely. So, um, you know, landing in Tucson, um, it can be, be a little prickly sometimes <laughs> being in the desert, but um, I was really thrilled when I uh, started working for the Aging Life Care Association. Um, it's a wonderful national association. We have 2000 members of aging life care managers so these are um, women who have degrees in nursing and in social work and other geriatric care um, professions and degrees, and they take care of the elderly. And you know what a time to be concerned with that and taking care of that. We have nine chapters all over the United States, nine regional chapters. Um, and you know, like for instance, New York has its own chapter because it's a big, big. Um, population and then um, our western region has about nine states in it so there's um, a variety there but the work that these um, these women and men do are really um, powerful they have you know real ability to take care of their clients on a, on a very personalized and individual basis um, they're able to coordinate care for you know and coordinate between the family and the doctors and and the nurses and all of the things that go into taking care of a person as they age. Um, and they're able to help um, orchestrate it all and, and they know all the local resources. So whenever you're thinking, well, what do we do about this? Or what do we do about that? Um, this is where an aging life care manager can come in and really help um, help sort that out for families. You know, families are so spread apart. Siblings are, are spread apart. Not all siblings get along. And, you know, this is a really easy way to um to have your your parent cared for um you know their, their best interest so i'm really excited to work nationally for um for this association and helping people this way and you're 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 doing the right thing because this is such an important time right now with so many elderly folks who are in trouble because of the uh because of the virus and also uh, access to food i mean things we're seeing right now on the news you know those lines in texas uh things that we'd never expect or the the terrible lines at hospitals in New York. It's, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's, it's shocking. Uh, let's get some of the great comments that are coming in here. Uh, Mark says, good evening from Durham, North Carolina. 
Uh, Pradnya says, hi, Mark. She's in uh, uh, um, Silver Spring, Maryland. And my father says, we're in the last day of first lockdown, for last day of first lockdown in Kerala. And look at Pradnya. This is what she everyone should do. She's tagging a friend who could benefit from this conversation. And uh, she's asking my dad, are you hearing about any extension of the lockdown? And uh, uh, Daryl wants to know if you're related to the Pulitzer Prizes, uh, Courtney. I'm sure you get this question all the time. <laughs> well, it's, um, you know, back in the old country, um, Joseph Pulitzer was one of the 12 cousins of my grandfather, who was one of 12, and they all came over to the <laughs> United States. Um, I have, you know, some, some funny little stories about that, which I can get into later <laughs> if you're interested. Sure. And, and my pal Stefan Kaplan's watching, sending positive vibes to all. Ashok Madan is watching from Long Beach, and Kalpana says, I'm watching from Saratoga, not far from MR. My positive April contribution is a daily post on Insta and Facebook with a fun, thoughtful post for my different writings. People tell me they're loving them and that each post lives their spirits. That's awesome. Kalpana, you got to come down on a future one of our uh, our positive stories. And look at Bill Ritter. I don't know MR, but he's fascinating. Wow. <laughs> MR, good for you. And of course, <laughs> okay. from New York, where I am, who doesn't know who Courtney is? Look at this. <laughs> This is what Bill Ritter is all about, folks. One of the biggest stars in the news business, reaching out, talking, connecting. He's so genuine, when he's whether he's off the camera or in front of the camera, and we're lucky that he's part of our world, and we are so grateful that he's okay and back in action. And uh, PK Sharma is, is tuning in from Riverdale, New York. It's just so great to uh, have all of you here. Uh, my dad says, more lockdown with some concessions. We do not know what. But dad, I'm wearing your shirt, your uh, Easter <laughs> color shirt, uh, your golf shirt. This is what he loves to play golf in. And I am uh, lucky the, to be wrapped in his love uh, here today. Uh, Emmanuel is watching. Uh, oh. Oh, I, my French <laughs> is bad. You'll have to read that. What does that say? It says, vous êtes tous formidable. It's my husband. <laughs> and what is he saying? He's saying, you're all wonderful. Oh, wonderful. He's talking just to you, of course. <laughs> Just telling Kalpana that you're rocking it, which is awesome. So let's get to MR and his story. Uh, we are live on multiple platforms. Hope all of you have tagged and shared and told your friends about all of this. And Pramod, uh, Pramod, Pramod says, uh, happy Easter to all. So MR, let's hear your story. And I've queued up a couple of websites. So when you're ready, we'll go to those. Great. Uh, my story, uh, Sri, is a, is a pretty simple one. Came here to study. Uh, from India, uh, then was lucky enough to go to Silicon Valley in 1982 when uh, there was no sense of what this was. There were a couple of young entrepreneurs at that time, Steve Jobs, Larry Ellison and stuff, who wanted to change the world, own the world. Who knew you fast forward 38 years later that actually it happened? Uh, so fortunate enough to be in Silicon Valley, uh, seen the good and the bad, uh, my first company that I joined, uh, I, I was there for three years. It grew, doubled every year, and then went Chapter 11. Then a couple of years ago, I tried to start up again after having worked for Larry Ellison for four years. And then and then and then four years and then and then and then I had to uh, go back to a startup. And what that made me do again was to go to a startup that doubled every year and went Chapter 11. And so think of the positive side of things. I tried yet another company. And in that one, I struck gold. The company went public. A couple of years later, I was on my own. Uh, so that's my Silicon Valley story. Fast forward from there, uh, my passion is to build networks. And so I built three different networks over the past 20 years. One is a network of the top 100 software CEOs uh, that is uh, represented in my website, sandhill.com. And the name of the conference that I do for these CEOs is called Enterprise. So it's enterprise.sandhill.com, where you can see that it's a charitable event where we bring together 100 CEOs from all these companies to share insider stories. So no media is allowed, no tweeting is allowed, and people just get together and share what's going on uh, within their own companies. So that's uh, sandhill.com. My second network is called the Corporate Eco Forum or ecoforum.com. While you're looking at Sand Hill, this is the network. Yeah, wait, I just for... want to interrupt. I, I, I'm sorry, I'm just going to interrupt, MR, because we've got to tell people what Sand Hill is, because oh, you have sandhill.com, okay. 
most non-Silicon Valley people won't know that sandhill.com is like owning Park Avenue, parkavenue.com or madisonavenue.com and you're in the advertising business. So tell us about Sandhill Road and what that is. Okay, I'm glad you brought that up, Sri. I skipped that part of my life. Uh, <laughs> when I first left uh, the, the uh, tech world, I became an angel investor before the term angel was coined, as you know, Sri. And uh, part of that was uh, most people got their money and do get their money even today from Sand Hill Road. That's where all the venture capitalists are. And so I managed to get sandhill.com at that time uh, for $20. And the smart VCs had not taken it yet. So <laughs> it was the best purchase I made. I'm still waiting for that big offer to come my way, which says, I'll buy your website. I'll buy your URL for $10 million. So we'll see if that happens. But we do own the most expensive virtual real estate in the world. This is where all the venture capitalists reside. And so I've just made it a free public site for entrepreneurs where people post opinions and trends in technology and so forth. And that's kind of what we do at Sand Hill. Uh, and enterprise.sandhill.com, Shri, if you can get, I don't know if you can get to that one, but it's uh, just in the same, uh, it's, it's not there, but you got to type it in, enterprise.sandhill.com. That's the website where uh, we have all the entrepreneurs get together from Silicon Valley. These are the CEOs of large companies like an Oracle or Microsoft or SAP, and many, many others come together. It's a charitable event. So every year we give away all the profits from the conference to many different nonprofits. And, and here it is, here's the site. Yeah, Enterprise. Uh, it, it, by the way, we were fortunate enough to be the last physical event in Silicon Valley before wow. we shut down. Wow. But the beauty of it was the night before at dinner, we gave away $275,000 to charity. Nice. Uh, so it was a good thing that we actually had this event happen. Uh, so that- look who, was, who, look who was there. The uh, Pete Brock, who worked for uh, President Trump. You see Eric Yuan, he came on Zoom, by the way. Yeah, and uh, he's promised us that Zoom is going to have virtual hugs and virtual handshakes and stuff. So I said, it's not gonna be as, real, as good as the real hug. Uh, Pat Gelsinger is an amazing CEO from VMware. Uh, he was voted the top CEO last year by in the, in the Fortune 500. Uh, Charles Phillips, who's actually from New York, is a leader of the Black Alliance, and he recently sold his company for $13 billion in wow. the tech industry and uh, co is contributed a lot of money that night out of the $275,000. So that's kind of what I do in the tech space. Uh, if you move fast forward to ecoforum.com, uh, that's the network I established about 13 years ago for 70 of the world's largest companies. This is Amazon, Apple, Disney, uh, UPS, Ford, General Motors, uh, the chief sustainability of officers of these companies get together and there's the black swan, COVID, uh, right in front of you, right? Uh, and these are all that you can see all the world's largest companies' logos there. They get together to make this place a better world. So reducing their greenhouse gases, uh, increasing their purchase, purchase of renewable energy and so forth. So that's the second network I started. And the third network uh, I started is in diaspora. Uh, if you go to indiaspora.org, you'll see this is the leadership group of Indian Americans. So Sri was at my first event ever in 2012 up in Mohonk, New York, uh, which looked like from uh, Days of Shining and Stephen King, but it was an incredible place. And at in diaspora, we're a leadership group, uh, which is focused uh, a lot on political engagement, community involvement, and also on uh, really giving back and philanthropy. And uh, I'll save the philanthropy portion for the next segment when I talk, Shri, because I've, I think I've talked enough about all the networks. We, we can come to the giving back in a little bit. Sure, and I needed some help doing this interview, so I decided that I'm gonna get a guest interviewer, a surprise guest interviewer in. Uh, he's uh, not a busy guy, so I thought it would be easy to just uh, bring him on here. Let's see if he's available. Hey, Bill Ritter, how are you, sir? Hey, Hi, how are you? Nice to meet you, Mr. and Courtney, how are you? Hi, oh my nice God, to look at this, folks. I don't, think, I don't wow. think I'm ever gonna go to Mohawk again now. <laughs> you, I know Mohawk. It's about, I do too, and now thinking about it with the Stephen King and the Shining in that building, uh, it sort of takes a little of the luster off it. Um, it's fascinating to hear you talk about this, and I'm, I'm wondering for both of you, because you have such expertise on this, and, and Shri, you know, these people were 
doing it when when you were doing it and, and you were a, a, a sort of the lone Pied Piper, but not really. Um, what's it going to mean? We are seeing, this is a great, a great example. We're seeing so many new uses for social media today with my in-laws. You know, we had all 10 grandchildren of my mother-in-law on one little Zoom screen. What, how are we going to come out of this when we do come out of it, if we ever come out of this? But when we do, how's it going to change our, our lives? We are used to having meetings now and talking to people and in a very different way because of all this. What's going to be the lasting effect, I wonder? Courtney, great question. Thank you, Bill. Could I go over to Courtney? Um, sure, yeah. I mean, that's something I've been thinking about a lot when we first began seeing um, these Zoom meetings for work, um, you know, and just the all of the different social groups that I'm in, church, you know, this morning was on, uh, was live streaming on Facebook. And I actually think, I'm kind of hoping, you know, that this will be the beginning of, of this new way, um, you know, offering this kind of connection for people that aren't mobile, that can't get out, you know, working with the elderly um, for my association, you know, it's, it's you know, just a, a wonderful way to really keep people connected. And I'm really hoping that that a lot of this doesn't go away. You know, I think it's so important. And, and the fact that we can have all these visuals that we couldn't have in you know, 93 and 98, it was really old technology back then. You know, I think it's a really great opportunity for this just to, you know, the kinks are getting worked out and um, for people to really um, harness this. It's only going to get more secure, more fine streamed, um, fine tuned. Um, I think it's going to be um, a really great opportunity. It's true. I mean, you can't, you know, if you're having your your cocktails, you know, we can all be in a room having our own cocktails, but um, it's so that's not totally the same. And yet just that being able to connect with people, you know, that's what's really important and um, and seeing people's faces. Is there money to be had in it, MR? Uh, yeah, well, let me tell you this. Uh, all three of my networks, whether it's uh, the Enterprise Network or the Eco Forum or in Diaspora, the first thing everybody wanted to do was to commiserate. So. We had Zoom meetings for each one of these networks. And we're learning this technology as we go along. You know, having one big meeting for 100 people is not as uh, useful sometimes as 10 meetings for 10 people. So we've gone to these small group meetings where 10 CEOs want to get together and they want to commiserate. You know, are you laying off people? Are you taking salary? Uh, are you the industry? These are the conversations that we have today. Uh, same thing with uh, the eco network. People want to know what are large companies doing? Are they cutting back on, on commitments? Are they laying off people? How do we get back together? Uh, so it's much more important than ever to connect. And I think this kind of connection will happen more frequently when we get into the post-COVID world. Is people will still say, hey, let's get on Zoom for half an hour and connect and start flying in to Chicago from all over the country. Right. That's interesting. I, and, and of course, Sri, I don't know if you heard about this, but he's, he's looking for investors. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Bill, just uh, you you mentioned it in the comments, but suddenly we have lots of people coming by to just want to hear how you're doing. Uh, please tell us. And when do you get back on the air full time? You've been on the air almost throughout your uh, your recovery, but tell us uh, when you get back on the air. I was on the air uh, every day except for the worst, uh, the, the first day, uh, the second day I was out, and it was. But it's been pretty pretty tough. Uh, I had uh, what they call a presumed case. I was not tested because my doctor said I was not seriously ill enough. Um, so I'm going back tomorrow. Uh, it's been uh, uh, two weeks and virus, and there's no data. So they want to get someone who's just coming back, and then I'll, I'll probably go back in a month or so. But I would love to have the antibodies because I would love uh, I'd love to be immune, but but not that so much as to give plasma for people. That and so. In these studies, you know, the testing was really a disaster. Um, they, they did not test so many people because unless you were seriously ill and about to die and needed hospitalization, they didn't want to test you because there weren't that many tests. So, you know, in, in New York, I think there's 700, eight, eight, six, seven, 600,000, half a million people or something. No, it's less than that. I'm sorry, half a million in the United States cases. So let's just say that there's that many. What if there are eight times the number of people that didn't get tested but had the virus? And the doctor said, no, don't go get tested. So there's millions of people out there who are not in the confirmed category, but in fact, were really sick. And this is a terrible, terrible virus to get. I mean, I was just 
you know, I was, it was terrible. I got the poop beat out of me is what it was. And, and it was hard, but I forced myself to work out lightly every day, almost every day. And I worked every day. I wanted to get up at 12 hours a day. I was sleeping, but I wanted to get up for several hours and actually do work. I was on the shows at five and six o'clock newscast and doing stories about people. And then I would just collapse afterwards. But my, you know, I really insisted on my bosses. I needed to work. I needed to have that energy and I needed to, uh, to exercise and breathe. Um, I'm sitting down now talking to you, but normally I would just be, if I were on the phone, I would be walking around the apartment because I wanted to move. But I, I'm boring compared to these really fascinating people. <laughs> I, I thank everyone and you, Sri, for all your good love and support. Uh, don't get sick. That's the main thing. Do not get sick. This is a really, really nasty virus and deadly as we've seen. Bill, uh, before I let you go, I, mean, I know you need to get back to your evening. Just how do you stay positive? That's the theme of tonight's show. What are some tips for a lot of people in your position would feel beaten down? Your family's away. You're by yourself. You kept that apartment pretty <laughs> clean. <laughs> you kept that apartment pretty clean. I my family. I, I did that to fake cry because I would really cry. I'm, I miss my family so much. They've been gone since March 11th. And, and thankfully, I, you know, if they were here when I was sick, I would have felt just horrible because um, it's a highly contagious thing. And I was really sort of compulsive and obsessive about washing my hands and doing this and doing that. But I took cabs to work and I'm pretty sure that's what did me in. Um, so I'm not I'm driving my mile and a quarter to work, which seems ridiculous. Um, and I, I'm doing that. But I, I starting tomorrow. But I, I do feel that I'm I, I just I, it's, what, what alternative really do you have? Um, to but be positive. We started a year ago, February, at our station, a Be Kind campaign and checking in with people about what schools especially were doing to be kind in this in this period, especially when on social media, there's just so much vitriol and so much hatred, uh, starting way at the top, I might say. And, and politics aside, just human kindness, starting right at the top. And, and the response has been fantastic. And I have gotten even more into it since I, we started it in February of, of 2019. And the response has been just fantastic. And I think that there's just so much more to be had by being kind and being positive than being negative. You know, it's the whole, you know, you get someone to do something with a carrot, not a stick. And, you know, being positive is the carrot and the stick is the negative. And I just think it's a slam dunk. And once you get into that, once you cross over and say, this is just the way it is, um, you'll start to delete people who are nasty on social media a lot faster. Yeah, and here's a question. Kelpina says, how do you manage alone when you're sick? This scares the heck out of me. Most of us want to be comfort comforted a little when we're really ill. It was really a hard thing. And I, um, um, I, I, I my wife, uh, when I came out of it a couple of days ago, um, this last week, uh, she said to me, because we spend a lot of time on FaceTime, I have two, two of my children are with her. And, and uh, you know, she said, I, I stayed up nights worrying, you know, how are you doing it? And, and you know, I, I, I think I had a fairly mild case compared to people who had serious cases. And so I was confident that if I did the right things and did breathing exercises, I had a trainer on Zoom who would give me breathing exercises to really force air into my lungs rather than it was really off. And I really think that that was, you know, kind of scary. I would sit up at night. Uh, incredible bad, weird dreams and vivid dreams and and i think some of it was i was worried that what would happen heaven forbid if if i didn't make it and i didn't want to be alone but i was so driven you know by the by by wanting to to be positive about this um but it was scary i mean really scary because you mean i don't sleep five hours a night normally and, and here i was sleeping 12 days of 12 hour nights and that's just a little a little frightening but I, I don't think I ever got depressed about it. I was really trying to be positive. No, thank you. And I remember I asked you uh, for one of the times whether we could talk, and you said, Sri, I'm sleeping 12 hours a day. And I couldn't believe it because I know you don't sleep on a regular basis. So I really know. Uh, this, is, uh, this is amazing. Before you go, we need to talk about the news, about the closing of the schools, some disagreements of whether the schools in New York are going to be shut uh, through the rest of the you know uh, summer and uh, spring semesters or... Uh, terms. Can you talk about that? What has your reporting told you about the disagreements between our mayor and our governor? You know, um, I'm going to try to be kind to each of them, but here you have the two most powerful Democrats in the state of New York, uh, the, the, the ground zero and epicenter for this uh, virus in the, in the country. And uh, it's a lot of, you know, two kids fighting on a playground. Um, the, the governor has, has the control over this. 
But you know what? The mayor, it, you know, we have 20 million people almost in the state of Cal in the state of New York, 8.6 million of them in the city of New York. So these guys, you know, they just don't really seem to like each other much. And, and they could have really said, look, here's what we need to do. I think that de Blasio is actually probably pretty right about this, but he knows that the governor makes the call on this. And so do it together. Why does there have to be this sort of peeing match between two skunks? And that's really what it is. And it's really disappointing because, you know, these guys have really important jobs. Um, I, I believe in the end schools will, it's gonna be a long time before schools come back. I just, I just don't understand how anyone could think that it's gonna happen. Think about your own lives. Um, do you want to go to a baseball game? That's how I, I, those are the example I use. When do you want to go to a baseball game without being six seats apart from somebody? And I think that's going to really be the sort of the benchmark. Um, you know, you guys, you guys know more about this stuff than I do, but I, I would say it, it's, it's a battle. The governor, I think, doesn't like to be told, uh, you know, the mayor wants to do this. I think they could have worked it out. They're big boys and they weren't playing like big boys. Uh, MR, you're, you're, if your governor, uh, he's getting a lot of credit, right? Governor Newsom versus, yep, yep. Uh, I mean, so is Governor Cuomo, but there seems to have been something they did. Bill, have you figured out why in Seattle, or in Washington and in and in California, that curve has been flattened a lot more than us? And maybe MR also has a view on this? Real briefly, yeah, I, I think a couple they, of they, things, did it, uh, they did it quickly, right? That's the main thing. Yeah. Newsom did I did it. it quickly. Also, there was no disagreement between the mayors and the governors in our state. Even if they had, they kept it very quiet. Uh, they did in an orderly way, and I think that's been very helpful uh, that the team, the political team worked together and left the egos aside. And I think that's what I sense in New York is that the egos are getting in the way. Uh, and in this kind of crisis, you just need to come together. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Uh, Bill, look at this uh, remark. Says, Hita says, I love, so glad this is happening. Real answers and super informative. Thank you. Uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, Tim says, thank you for this positivity show. I needed this today. I miss IRL Easter. Uh, you said your Seder was uh, everybody in a Zoom box. Is that right, uh, Bill? My Seder was, uh, mm -hmm. yes, on, on uh, Tuesday night. Was it Tuesday night? I think it was. <laughs> yeah. What and, night? Uh, and then today we had, with my mother-in-law, we had uh, an Easter gathering. She usually has it at her house, and we were all there uh, by, by Zoom. IRL, um, what does that mean? In, in real life, Easter. Oh, in, in real life. life. IRL was my father's name. Earl is how they pronounce it. For some ungodly reason, they named they, they spelled it IRL. I don't know. Wait, that's his real spelling of his. Yeah, first IRL. Name. Yeah. Oh my god! So that's why you that's why you took a double take there. I don't right? know. That's fantastic. I do think that that the that the state of New York and the city should have shut down a, a, a two weeks before they did. I think Newsom and uh, the and state of Washington. Well, obviously, Washington, Washington was already you know that came over maybe from from the from the west or the east that came in um, and had a different trajectory than the stuff that happened here. But I, I think that we started too late. I think we started earlier than perhaps the federal government would have liked because shutting down the, the engine, the economic engine of this country, which is what New York is um, for financial anyway, I think that, that that was a big, that was the start of something very, very big. And then once that happened, you know, all the sports teams, I think when the sports teams shut down, I think I said this last week, you three, I think it was a sea change, and I think it told everyone, "Whoa, it's it's they're shutting down all the games of every major sport." And I think that really hit people very differently than than shutting down the deli or shutting down the hair salon. That, this was very different, and all these players not being able to play. I, I think that was a very big deal. But I think that Newsom did a very good job, and I think we're seeing less than expected problems in California uh, because of what he did. He was two weeks earlier than than we we thought. Of. Oh, all right. Well, Bill, gonna... Bill, when when can we see you on TV? Tell us tomorrow. Tomorrow, you're... five, six, and eleven. I'm going to be on. I got to get to bed because I'm going to be on live with uh, Kelly and Ryan uh, in the nine o'clock hour. They're going to look at me back and say what what I did living here, turning my nice family apartment uh, back. <laughs> well, no one's here. They're not going to hear me uh, into a bachelor pad. Really, I I, I got. I think I showed you on a tour of it once. Uh, three. Uh, you know, my daughter's bathroom is now my makeup room and. Uh, <laughs> The nice den we have behind me has turned into a little gym with an extra cycle and weights. Um, so it's probably better than, than my wife, especially, is not here for this. But I don't think terrible. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, Say bye to Bill Ritter. Follow him, Bill Ritter7. He's awesome. Thank you very much, Bill. Bye. Thanks. Was that amazing? Uh, yeah. Thank you to both of you yeah. for letting us bring him in. Uh, for yeah. those of you who are not in New York, uh, Bill Ritter is the 
uh, anchor in New York City. He, he used to work for the LA Times out in California and then went into television and told us all these amazing stories covering the world, but really a New Yorker at heart. And you saw his genuineness, right? There's no nothing uh, fancy about him, about his outlook, anything. So, uh, Mr. Let's uh, g talk a little bit about uh, how you saw the leadership of what's happening in California, and not not necessarily compared to the rest of the world or to the federal government, just the leadership, because you have seen great leaders, you've worked with them. What can you tell us about this crisis and leadership? Yeah, and this is where, Sri, I think uh, we can set an example here in California. I think shutting down any economy is hard for a politician to do. But I think the mayor of San Francisco deserves the first credit, London Breed. She was the first one to declare an emergency uh, of any major city, I think. Uh, that set the tone. And then uh, L.A. Uh, did the same thing. And then, you know, Gavin Newsom was tracking everything closely and really worked with everybody including all the healthcare officials and others to just get it done and take the hit, take the hit early. And you can see, I think at that time, New York and San Francisco had the same number of cases, I think, when all this started. And suddenly now you, you can see the difference. So I think that has something to do with showing leadership, taking the hit early. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think so far, knock on wood, it's paid off. We don't know where it's all going to end, but I think I would definitely credit the uh, Gavin Newsom and the entire uh, mayor network in California for, for towing the line, even if they did or didn't like it, you know? And, and by the way, for those of you who aren't very familiar with Northern California, they're like, there's a major, you know, town or township or city, like all ch connected to each other yeah. that form the famous, you know, Silicon Valley, Bay Area, all of that. It's not one entity, right? Like that's, that's yeah. something that people are often surprised. And San Francisco and uh, Silicon Valley are actually kind of separated. And uh, there's that, uh, I, I'm sure the traffic is zero now, right? You can probably make that 101 drive really fast if you wanted to. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. People are going, I'm told, at 80 miles an hour and nobody's getting tickets. So yeah. I think it's a free for all, yeah. but very few cars that we see, yeah. Yeah, uh, so we're gonna talk about the charity work that MR is doing. But before that, I want to bring Courtney into the conversation. First, reflect on seeing Bill Ritter there. Uh, how do you feel? And uh, talk a little bit about your love for New York City because you are a New Yorker at heart. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was amazing to see him. You know, the thing is, <clears throat> I am, um, um, you know, living abroad, living in a foreign country for eight years, I really, um, nothing brings out your New Yorker self when you're, you know, when you're away from, from your home and um, and here too in Tucson, you know, there's times where I'm just like, I, I really notice um, my, my New York self. And so that was amazing to see Bill Ritter there. Um, you know, I, those are the things that just are such a part of your daily life, you know, seeing your, your morning newscasters and hearing the news, seeing those people reading about them in the paper, um, running into them in, you know, in, in your little neighborhood at the, um, you know, the little corner stores. Um, that's one thing that I, I really love and miss so much about New York is just that that closeness, you know, that we, we're all in our little neighborhoods all together. It's kind of the way you describe Northern California. You know, it's just, it's all of these um, really unique areas all mushed in. And then we get to go to all the other parts of, of New York and, and Manhattan and, um, I know, so those are the things I really miss about it. Um, I'll never forget when I moved to France, I took this great um, little seminar um, given by some um, women at the American church. It was called Bloom Where You're Planted. And it was you know, specifically for expats who are moving to Paris or, or to France. And she was talking about you know, the codes that, um, that French people have when they communicate, you know, and, and it's like when you're in line at the Duane Reed, it's a very different experience than when you're in line at the pharmacy in Paris. You know, there's really all those little subtle ways that people communicate. And, um, you know, and I really noticed how um, how it's very different, you know, from how I'm used to um, interacting with people. And so, um, you know, just the convenience of being able to, you know, New York is that great town of I, I like to think of it as like espresso on jet fuel. You know, you can get anything <laughs> you want, anywhere. And, you know, it's just, it's that energy, you know, and, and I remember reading some papers in the, 
you know, the times about with this, um, with this virus, how New York without the people and without that energy, it just it can really, um, it's a different city right now. It's meant to be lived in. It's meant to be busy. It's meant to be, um, you know, moving at that pace. Um, you know, I, I can't help it when I walk on the sidewalk, my feet, they hit the concrete and they go. It's like, right. <laughs> you can't walk slowly. And now, now we have to keep that distance. Uh, one of the uh, folks asked our guest speaker for our my morning Sunday morning read along with the New York Times. You know, what do you do? What is the etiquette of somebody's too close to you? And he he said, "You go around me." Like he said, yeah. "Would you like to go around me?" And and that's really important. But by the way, you know, we're seeing such great uh, camaraderie, people talking, connecting. They're doing such good work. But we still have trolls and people coming in. Look at somebody tweeting. Media is lying to you and running away. Like you know, this is, you know, the media is telling the truth about what's going on. We watched the Nick Kristoff video that's on the New York Times mag uh, website today. Everybody should see this. What it shows is what's happening inside hospitals, and there's a right-wing conspiracy that the hospitals are not in trouble, and it's all fake to make President Trump look bad. And why, if that if they are so bad, why don't we see any videos or photos? And the reason is because you're not allowed to for privacy reasons, right? right. And so he was allowed in. And the kind of things he showed were so stunning to see. I want everybody to go and watch that. But now we're just going to reset. I'm going to make sure our guests are okay for staying a little longer because we want to get to some very, uh, very positive ideas for uh, to prep for the uh, for the rest of the week, for the beginning of the week. Uh, my guests are Courtney Pulitzer and M.R. Rangaswamy. Courtney is in Tucson. M.R. is in San Francisco, the city itself. A lot of people are friends in the Bay Area, but not that many may have friends who are in the neighborhood he's in right there in the heart of San Francisco. Uh, you also, if you are joining us late, uh, Courtney started in the tech business in New York in 1994 and uh, had a wonderful career in New York, in Paris, and now is with, in Tucson with the Aging Life Care Association, helping people manage their relatives end of, or towards golden years, let's say. Uh, some of your clients are 80 to 100 years old, and uh, very important that people get taken care of. So thank you for that work you're doing. MR is uh, my friend of many years. He has built multiple networks, he went into Silicon Valley, was one of the first angel investors. He was so new that the Wall Street Journal, when they used angel investor in a story, they put quote marks around it because it was so new to people. And the guy they featured on the front page of the Wall Street Journal, this guy, M.R. Rangaswamy, and he's here with us today. He's the guy, I keep telling him, I wanna be him when I grow up. He has been able to uh, provide for his family, but at the same time, uh, do so much for the world and also uh, knows how to have a good time. He has, uh, I don't know if they're season tickets, but he sees the Warriors every every chance he gets. He's also into things like Australian rules football. Uh, so I want to hear at some point how he's going to, how he's surviving, missing all of those action sports uh, that he loves so much. But now, MR, I want you to talk about a couple of your great initiatives uh, in, in diaspora you told us about, but through that, you have built yeah. something else. Yeah, uh, thank you, Shreed. Thank you so much for having me. And I want to just focus on the positivity part of it, right? The COVID crisis happened. There are millions of people unemployed uh, and so much going on around us. The in diaspora community rallied at this time, literally about two weeks ago, they came uh, to us. We are a membership group, as you know. They came to us and said, uh, hey guys, do something, do something now, do something quick, do something that makes an impact uh, that helps people and do something for the U.S. and India because we have cut off our feet in both uh, countries. So we quickly put something together. Uh, we were obviously, everybody knows Floyd Cardoz, the popular chef who passed away. Uh, we were inspired by him, in fact, to say, what would he have done? I think what he would have done is to feed people. So what we ended up doing was a campaign to fight hunger during COVID. So we went back to our membership after we came up with the idea there are two groups, if you see here on the website, one is Feeding America in the US. It's a network of 200 food banks that really leverage your dollars. You give $1 to them, it supplies 10 meals to poor people out there who need them. The other organization in India is called Goonj. They have a great supply chain and logistics infrastructure that gets ration kits to migrant workers. All of you know 
the serious problem and the horrific scenes experienced by these migrants in India when they were going from the cities to the villages with no food, shelter, and clothing. Uh, so Goonj gets them ration kits. They put a meal together that lasts a family of four for seven to 10 days and delivers it to them in remote places. Uh, and again, they are equipped to feed a million people in India with this program. So Indiaspora has put together a program called Chalo Give. It's called chalogive.org, which Sri is showing you right now, C-H-A-L-O-G-I-V-E.org. And our initially our members, when we went to them in three days, we were able to raise $500,000 from our membership. This was the outpouring of generosity in our community. And then we have set aside $100,000 to match people on the site. You see that $17,000 on the site? That's already doubled to $34,000. In fact, $35,000 in change. So there's still room for all people who see this to give even a dollar or 10 or 20 because that doubles your impact. And that is what this website is doing now is going to every person in America and saying, feed either Americans or feed the needy Indians. This is something we have to do as a community. And you know, Sri, the Indian American community, we're about three to four million people. This just exemplifies the work we've done. Again, here you see the ambassadors for this program are Indra Nui. A lot of you New Yorkers know that she was the former chairman of Pepsi. Uh, and uh, former Surgeon General uh, Dr. Vivek Murthy is another uh, big supporter of the organization as well. He's on the board of Feeding America. But again, the Indian Americans are, Shri, are 1% of the population. As you know, they are seven. we are 7% of the doctors in this country. So people like Bill Ritter and others, you know, 7% of the people on the front lines are Indian doctors and Indian nurses and healthcare givers, really at the front of this crisis. And you, as you know, 10% of COVID cases in the U.S. are healthcare professionals. So we really, as a community, Indians are not just giving money like we are at Chalo Give, but our people are putting themselves in danger in front of uh, the public. And also all our communities throughout the country, as you know, Sri, are giving things, whether it's uh, see the Sikh community giving free food to people or other communities just giving to food banks. I think this is a time the Indian American community to be positive and they've showed that by being generous. Thank you so much. I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about all the great work that's happening. So many organizations are working over time and this is the moment where you hope that we all learn something and all and things will be different when this is all over. Uh, I, I, I pray that it will be, but you cannot be sure. ChelloGive.org is the organization. Chello means let's go. Let's and go. Give, of course. So Chello, that's a good word. I always try to teach people trying to learn Hindi, especially if you have Indian friends. You just tell them Chello, Chello, meaning let's move. Yeah. Let's get vamanos. You know, it's just like yeah. let's get a move on it. So we're teaching Courtney some Hindi as well. Yeah. Uh, jo Joe, a question. Uh, sorry, yeah. or Mr. Question. Uh, do these organizations help people in need in my state of Georgia? Yes. Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, there are 200 food banks that work with Feeding America. There are several of them, I know for sure there's one in Atlanta and some of the other cities as well. If you go to the F uh, Feeding America network, you'll see a food bank near you and they will be helping people in need. With, uh, and there's no discrimination. You can be from Georgia or Arizona or Nevada. Uh, fo the food bank delivers every day. Thank you. Look at these great comments coming in from folks. Uh, Pradna says, MR, this makes me so proud. And people are having their own conversations as well, which is really great. Courtney just tagged her friend, Ankur Shah. Oh, yeah. and Ankur, uh, yeah. he was my first, first um, uh, employee. And um, he was uh, medical, he was, was waiting to go to medical school after he finished interning with me or working for me. And now he and his brother Sachin are great, um, you know, good friends. and. He was my best employee ever. <laughs> oh, wow. That's saying something. I know you've had a lot of them, so that's great. Uh, folks, a reminder of each of these folks' Twitter handles, at C Pulitzer, at Aging Life Care, and at Mr. Sandhill or MR Sandhill, at In Diaspora Forum, and at Chalo Give. And you just missed Bill Ritter, so you have to watch him on the re re replay, which will run on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn. And don't forget to please subscribe to my YouTube channel, because then you'll always know when we're live. And what I love about this, MR, is that you're able to talk to multiple 
folks in different networks. Instead of having a closed Zoom call, you're talking to the world. Absolutely. And that's what we love about this. Uh, Prarthana says, uh, MR, excellent initiative. I will share this with Indians in the film industry. That's mm. wonderful. And Sachin is already here. Thanks for the shout out. Yay. Oh my God. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, people are people have time on their hands, right? They're just yeah. Uh, they're just here. And Mark says, he, you, I know that I, he's, he's going to reach out to both of you to be on his podcast. He has yeah, fabulous podcasts like and uh, he has given us so many guest ideas and he's used so many of our guests. And that's the amazing thing. People watch this to get show ideas for networks, CNN, all the major platforms that borrowed our guests. And we love it because nobody has our, you know, exclusive ideas. We do this to shine a light on good people and good work. Um, so we we don't want to keep these folks for so long. It's their dinner time. I'm also ready to call it a night here. But I do want to talk to you about a couple of important things. One is uh, that um, we had a question from Kalpana said, I'd love to hear what the speakers think about what the positive fallouts are going to be about post COVID. Are they going to be are we going to be kinder to nature? Are we going to leave larger tips when we eat out? Are we going to have silent Sundays when people stay at home and let the world renew itself? just a little. So Courtney first, uh, put you on the spot with that, and then MR, and then we have well, a few more questions. And don't forget to follow these folks. Please tag them. And I'm here every day, folks. Of 31 straight days we've done this. My goal is to do this as long as we're in lockdown and before, as long as I don't get uh, COVID-19. I know people don't like it when I say it, but you've got to laugh a little bit. Otherwise, you will cry all the time. So please go ahead, Courtney. Um, yeah, you know, so, um, this is something I've been thinking a lot about when, you know, when I lived in France for eight years, I, you know, being in New York, I really learned, had to learn how to kind of dial back my, my energy sometimes or my intensity. <clears throat> and the French still do things like, you know, family Sunday dinners, they take time off, they relax, they do nothing, you know, they can really relax. I mean, they work very hard too, but they really have a nice balance in their life. And, and that's something that I've been watching and noticing as the world is shutting down around this COVID-19. And I'm, my hope is that it will be a way for people to have kind of hit that reset button. We see all of those pictures of, of Mother Earth, you know, with the air getting clearer, the pollution lightening up and streets are clearer. And I'm hoping that that is, a, you know, a nice, as we say, clandoy, you know, a little, um, a little nod to, um, yeah, let's let's put the pause, you know, one day a week. Let's slow down. Maybe more people can work from home more days of the week. Maybe we can, you know, just take a little more time and not be rushing around so much. Really appreciating, you know, this this kind of stillness that's been enforced on us um, to to really be with the people that are important or to, to be with ourselves and take that time within ourselves. So I'm really hopeful, you know, that that this will be something that's that's going to start kind of, you know, a, a big shift for people. Um, you know, being kinder, focusing on what's positive, like you with this show, sweetie. So I appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Over to you. Yeah, I think uh, you know, I sent a video uh, home a week ago, and someone heard the birds chirping on the video. So my the response back to me was, "Hey, I heard birds chirping." Uh, that was amazing, right? And and you see now in India, you can see the Himalayas from most of the, the cities that are close to the mountains uh, all over. The pollution, the right? The pollution, the pollution is, is limited. Uh, people say the water in the, the Ganga is actually now drinkable, if you can believe that, right? So all these stories are coming out all over the world. So the question is, and I, like I said, founded the Corporate Eco Forum, which again is a group that is for a better world for leaving the world better than we came into and so forth. So I'm hoping that as we kind of re-enter the post-COVID world, we're not in this rush to go back and consume and spend our way back into more debt. Uh, al already this whole uh, crisis has resulted in so much debt uh, and so forth. So I, I hope we take a deliberate step back to kind of being a more sustainable world. And that's, that's the hope. And, and I'm sure a lot of people will agree with us that that's the way to get back. It's not this mad rush to get back and be exactly how we were before. I think we have to really pause and reflect on who our friends are, 
what we like to do, what we don't like to do, uh, and really get back in a more sensible way. And you just said it, and here's an article that my friend uh, Bill Mitchell wrote, and this is a view from the home of my friend Veer Singh in Delhi, and yeah. blue skies, like, uh, you know, you can't, uh, it's hard to understand that when I was in India in January, your Apple Watch says healthy, uh, I mean, it starts by saying unhealthy air, and then it says very unhealthy, and I said, isn't that bad? They said, oh, no, no, that's every day. What you worry about is when it says hazardous. So they're used to very unhealthy as a kind of standard uh, situation. And now you're seeing blue skies, which is, uh, you know, this is one of the results of people not producing as much. Uh, we have some comments that have been coming in. And by the way, I'd love again that Sachin was able to show up. And I hope Sachin, since he got such a global recommendation better than anything on LinkedIn, he will make a donation to Chalo Give and join MR uh, and help out, uh, you know, the Indian side of his uh, of his family. But of course, uh, it's also helping America as well. Doug Levy says Feeding America is a fabulous coordinating network for food banks across the country. Among other things, they manage the pipeline between farmers and other food suppliers and food banks to get food to all those hungry people. On the front page of the New York Times, a story about food being wasted yeah. because there's not enough. Uh, the pipelines are broken. And that's really uh, a, a problem. Uh, Emmanuel has put in a link to an Instagram that we will check out. And <laughs> Kalpana says, I've, I've never, never, never seen blue skies in the major cities in India in the past decade. This is crazy. And Sachin's asking for a link to the donation. So yeah. there we go. Chalo, it's yeah, link. Chalogive.org. 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 Yeah. Chalogive uh, just C-H-A-L-O. You see the spelling on the site uh, right there. So please. Uh, go there and make a donation right now, cellogive.org. You are, you can, I love what you've set up, Amar. You can give to America, you can give to India, or what button, give to both. And that's no. that's that's really good. And I, I'm glad you've done that. And Sachin, thank you for stepping up. Everybody should step up, whether you're watching this live or later. Amar, a question for you also is, uh, what are, you know, historically in the last 30 years, whenever we've had crises, something good has come out technologically right we yeah. have seen after the dot com bust happened you saw even your own some of your own companies were affected but as a result of that there was uh new initiatives new uh, better kind of focus on valuations and you saw after the 2008 crisis that's when social networking really took off because companies saw that they needed to be out there and not rely on traditional ways of getting the word out right every cycle there's something or the other that's able to spring up. Any thoughts? And I know both you and Courtney have seen the entire tech story on two coasts. So yeah. I'll go to Courtney after you with the same question. Yeah, great question, Sri. You know, I've, I've been here through that bubble as well, the 2000 bubble, when all the tech companies went bust and San Francisco looked like a ghost town. But then from that crisis emerged a whole bunch of players, right? Uh, that got started uh, just before the crisis, like a Google and others all came about uh, when they made it through that hump. Uh, then fast forward to 2008 and the subprime crisis, companies like Airbnb and Uber and all these others got started around that time as well. So every time there's a crisis, I think there's a new group of companies that can emerge. I think there will be another set of companies coming out uh, from this crisis. You can see that working at home, uh, the work of the future is going to be included uh, office work and home work, uh, to put a pun on the word home. Uh, so I think you'll see products and applications coming out uh, that give you more productivity working from home. It's not just Zoom or not just uh, all your spreadsheets and your office. There's got to be more applications that make you more productive, more collaborative. So I think you can see a whole host of enterprise applications service people who work from home and people who also work sometimes from the office. So this whole collaborative type of systems will only have better solutions as we go forward. And there are many, many other solutions that will just get started now that we, we can't even predict. So I think if you look three to five years from now, you'll see a bunch of new companies. Great. That are doing new crazy things, yep. <laughs> uh, go ahead, Courtney. Um, yeah, you know, I think that as we were talking about the environment, um, I'm, I'm hopeful and, and thinking is there's been so much focus on climate change and as the world has seen, you know, with the pollution going down and um, roads being less used, 
that um, this will be a nice start to some more innovation and more creativity around taking care of our uh, of our earth. I know here in Tucson, you know, sustainability is a big topic. We live in the desert, and you know, we need to figure out how we can have water and have that be sustainable, and um, you know, local gardens and all of those things. So I'm hoping that this will be another way, in addition to you know, sort of high-speed connectivity for all um, so that we can work from home more, have school from home if we need or, or options along those lines, but that also for, you know, the earth and taking care of, um, you know, all of the, the issues that are um, in our face also, you know, it's, it's, it's right in our face just as, as much as COVID is. Um, so hopefully we'll get back to that um, after we take care of, you know, and also just all the health issues, you know, like finding faster ways to find vaccines, faster ways to test. Um, I'm hoping that we'll get more innovation around all of those types of medical issues. Um, all of our frontline health workers, you know, like exposing that um, that aspect of, um, of the world and, and our people who are working in grocery stores and delivery trucks, you know, and just giving them, you know, some, uh, you know, more safety around just the way they do their works and all those essential workers. So. Yeah, no, thank you. And I see some great comments about people talking about how theater will change, sports will change. Uh, and uh, Renee uh, is saying thank you for connecting positive people and ideas on my show. And uh, before we let both of you go, I wanted to just show uh, you MR's view. He said he wished he could show us the view. So here's your chance, oh, MR. Move, move it up. We can't yeah, we will. One second. We'll just take that <laughs> off. And there you go. Uh, we'll we'll just zoom in a little bit. Tell us what we're looking at, and we'll show some photographs uh, before you uh, head out. I think that's the Golden Gate Bridge, Free. You and I were on my uh, deck looking on a beautiful day here in San Francisco. And, wow. and that's the view I get from my office every day that keeps me positive. I mean, you know, we saw the other day, the Grand Princess come in with all the COVID passengers. But we also saw people come out, uh, the ship leave after everybody was quarantined and safe. So, you know, we keep seeing all kinds of uh, ships and other things passing by. And if you go on to the next one, I think you took this in my office. This was the article three you mentioned in the front page of the Wall Street Journal that uh, gave me my 15 minutes of fame. So I think... Uh, <laughs> I think we should tell people that, that that article was written by uh, Stephanie yeah. Metha, who is now a star uh, a journalist. Uh, she was obviously a star. She was already Wolf Wall Street Journal A1. Yeah. I think that might have been her first A1 story. But yeah. uh, she's now the editor of Fast Company and Fast is doing Company. great work. And you've been a mentor to so many people. And that's uh, just an example of uh, how many people you have touched them are. Let's see if we can show a couple of other pictures. Look at them using Angel, uh, Courtney, in quote marks, because it was so new, 1997. <laughs> and uh, it's it's kind of hilarious uh, to think that. And then what are we looking at here? You got you got to show it, Sri. Oh, sorry. I, 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 sorry. I, I'm, I'm uh, sorry. I was... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I was so caught up in the thing yeah. that I was not uh, showing it too properly. So hold on, let me just see if I can pull this up here. Can you see? This is also. Uh, uh, let's see. One second. That's this the, is, that's the Presidio, I think, behind yep. there. Yeah, and then that's where are we now? Cal God, I I can't. That that's near my neighborhood somewhere. Is my guess. <laughs> Yeah, that is. I think that's the home of like uh, one of the senators lives near you. Oh, and oh uh, Diane Feinstein's home is down there. Right. Uh, yeah. And also, uh, I think the sing uh, the Zynga uh, boys. Uh, one yep. of them is there, right? Uh, yep. Who made their money there? So uh, you've seen it all. I, I want to leave you both with um, a chance to give us some final thoughts. I will also show again the organizations you work with so that people who have joined us late can get that information. So Courtney, we'll start with you and then we'll go to MR. Give us some, you know, prep for Monday. Uh, how do we, how do, how do we stay positive? How do you both stay positive? And you both work and have worked with companies that rely on human interaction and being in the same place. Uh, how do you both not get down to say, oh my God, like my business has been hurt or will be hurt, but you look at you, both of you are so positive. Uh, I just wanna hear that and I want our viewers to get that tonight. Um, you know, I, I think for me, it's just um, my my parting words. Um, it's just, you know, being able to appreciate the simple things, being able to appreciate um, 
you know, gratitude, having gratitude in life helps me get through a lot of um, times that were dark or, or um, you know, there were some hardships that I've, I've gone along my little journey. And, <clears throat> you know, it can go for, a, it can go a long way having some gratitude, um, you know, and, and I really try and appreciate um, the people that are in my life, the people that I work with, um, the work that I get to do every day, um, you know, having a son, um, he's a joy in my life and, and that just brings me so much joy. Um, and, um, having a little family with my French husband, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it's just being able to really, um, when you can look back at hardships you've gone through, um, it's a great opportunity to look at where you are and to just be appreciative for that. And, um, you know, every day I, I get to think about, um, how grateful I am. Um, just being able to wake up and, and enjoy my family and the work that I do um, and being able to help people. Um, I'm really driven by that. So I'm, I'm really appreciative to be on the show, Sri, and to speak with you and, and uh, get to see you and be with MR is really amazing. I'm also very inspired and want to uh, keep in touch some more. And, and everyone out there, you know, that's what makes this world go round is all of us connecting, all of us interacting and um, sharing our ideas and our, our thoughts. It just, it makes it all go around. So let's, let's keep it up. Looking at such lifecare.org is the organization that you are working with and you're making such a difference. We're so grateful you're doing that. And look at such has jumped in and says, look for lots of public health majors in the coming yeah. years. Public health is the foundation of all civilization. I love that. Uh, MR, we should get him involved in, in diaspora. Uh, the problem is, of course, there are a lot of people named Sachin Shah. So we've got to find the right <laughs> Sachin Shah to join us. Uh, oh, yeah. we have to get Courtney. You're all connected. The three of you, the three of us are connected in our calendar invite. So we'll have to, <laughs> we'll have to connect uh, that way. Uh, thank you very much, Courtney. I'll let you go back to your wonderful family. Uh, oh, good night, everybody. Please yeah. follow Courtney. She is at C Pulitzer, at Aging Life Care. Everybody who has an elderly relative, uh, please uh, look into this, talk to her about the value of having an aging life care plan and a case manager. Uh, I know I will want one one day for my kids because can't trust these young people these days. You got to take it all on yourself. Uh, as my kids tell me, you know, I'm going to be 50 this year. That's old. So uh, <laughs> thank you, Courtney. Okay, thank, you. thank you. Bye bye. 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 Thank, you, Thank yeah. you for being here, staying so long, sitting there so patiently. I'm so grateful, MR. Even the light has changed in your room, right? There's Absolutely. This I'm, I'm sitting as the sun is setting free, but I want to leave you with a positive thought and what dr uh, drives me and has driven me in the past. Uh, I've not shared this with too many people, but you know, I lost my dad when I was 10 years old. Uh, and that has been in my heart forever. And so when I got married and I wanted to have children, I wanted to make sure that I gave them everything I had in terms of time more than anything else. So I was a stay at home dad, literally, uh, when they grew up, right? So that's what I wanted to do. And I said, if they have at least 10 years with me, I would have done my job. Okay. So now my daughters are 23 and 20. I've given them maybe too much more time than, than <laughs> they expected, but that's what has driven me to date is that you got to take care of your family. You never know uh, what's going to happen. And so you start with that. Uh, the other question I think you said was, uh, someone asked was, how do you get motivated and how do you keep positive? A colleague of mine said two things, and this works uh, pretty well. Uh, one is if you're paralyzed and you, you got to do something, it's Monday morning, you know, take five or 10 minutes and get your heart rate up, okay? So get that heart rate up, do something for five to 10 minutes, you'll feel better. And the second thing is do something good for others. That'll make you feel better too. So if you're feeling down, you're feeling logy, you're, you're out of it, work out a little bit, get your heart pumping. And second thing is do something nice for others. The, I go by my neighborhood once in a while, I see a guy outside the Starbucks coffee shop, I don't give him money, but I go in. He always likes a hot chocolate. I go him get a large cup of hot chocolate with whipped cream, and I give it to him, and that brings a smile on his face. So do something nice uh, for someone else. 
And I think Sri, uh, I could, you could have teed it up better. Uh, you bring up the Chalo Give website. That's another way that you can help us all. Uh, and you'll feel definitely better if you're going to feed someone. My mother always told me, you know, you can give a lot of money to people, but they'll never get satisfied. But if someone comes home for dinner, you can give them so much food that they're going to feel full. And that's what I think you can enable Chalo Give to do is to, to give generously, uh, to get us to uh, our, my secret goal is that it hits a million dollars uh, by the end of the campaign. So please uh, help us achieve that. And Sri, thank you so much once again. You've been a great friend uh, and thank you for having me here. Thank you uh, for being who you are and for sharing that story about your dad and the strength of you and the strength of your family, right? The, the women in your family and in your life who uh, lifted you up. We should never forget that. And we're grateful to everyone who makes it possible for all of us to have the lives we have. My mom is watching from uh, Trivandrum and Kerala. Uh, hello, Amma. We love you. We're sorry you're not here. Uh, we want to see you soon. MR will come to Trivandrum and say hello if he could. That's yeah. the kind of guy he is. Uh, but uh, I'm hoping to get out there and see them. But I've got to say, it's going to be tough, right, MR? To get on a plane yeah. is not going to be easy. And we all have to think about that. Uh, Daryl says, sage and advice, MR. And that is, uh, that is so, so beautiful. Gas prices are down, 135 a gallon. It's usually over three, almost to $4 sometimes. Stefan says, love San Francisco. Stay strong, everyone. Sri and I were just working with the Aquarium of the Bay on the wonderful celebration of the 30th anniversary. That was a project that MR's network brought us, thanks to the great George Jacob, who works there. And uh, uh, there's so much great stuff happening. Doug, who's in San Francisco, you guys need to meet. You're my two great communicators in California. Doug works with hospitals. He works with, he's written a book on coronavirus already, how to communicate in the age of coronavirus. And Doug would be a great speaker at any of your virtual events, MR. Uh, he's in San Francisco. And he says, thank you for all the work you're doing and keeping things in the right direction. I want you guys to connect. And his Twitter handle is SF Doug. So he is walking the walk there of that San Francisco love. Mark says, don't say that he, I'm old because he's eight years older in July and his dad will be 80. Good luck to him. So 50 is not old. Sachin says, thanks for the invite. Interesting show. We're here every day, folks. Tomorrow, 9 p.m., we're going to meet the great professor, Hitendra Wadwa, who's going to talk about leadership in a time of crisis. Joe says 50 is the new 35, which means 58 is the new 40. And uh, Courtney is still watching. It says definitely connect with Sri. And we're just so grateful to everybody. Please, please email me, Sri at Sri.net. I'm easy to find, but I want you to connect with these great folks. And Arun says, good, great advice, MR. Enjoying your show from Mumbai. Hi. Uh, do you want to tell them a little yeah. bit about who he is? Because what a great audience yeah. member to have. Uh, Arun Kumar was at the first in diaspora, Shri, if you remember, in yes. Mohonk, and he's now, he then went on to the Obama administration where he was in, uh, in the Commerce Department, and now he's the, Cape, the CEO of KPMG India, where he manages uh, 22,000 people. So a great supporter. He's on our board at Indiaspora, and great to see him uh, join the show. So hi to Purnima and Arun from Mumbai. Yeah, and... Uh... Uh, uh, I, I like Mark Lee's math, says Doug, and uh, Jonathan says, great show. And yes, Arun Kumar, great to have you here. You need to come on our show. Tell us what you're doing with KPMG and love to Purnima as well. MR, I'm going to let you go. Uh, thank, thank you so you. much for being here. And you had the idea to have this show stream on the Indiaspora Forum Facebook group so that more people can join. You have a great tech mind. So I know you will see, I wanted you to see this technology. I call this yep. poor man's television, but now you can see instead of being siloed, you're open to the world and you can have these connections. So awesome. if you have ideas for guests, I would love to have them. Courtney already sent me several guests. Courtney's still watching. So if you don't mind, I'm just gonna bring her back on. I, I think uh, she has a guest with her who just ran away, but uh, here's Courtney. Uh, Courtney, here she is. Uh, we just brought you on surprise, Courtney. Uh, let's see. I think your guest, your your the person who you were with, ran away. But let's see if he comes back. Uh, uh, where where there he is? Hello. Very nice to see you. Your mic is muted, so we'll just have you say hello. <laughs> hello. Bonjour. Bonjour. Uh, uh, <laughs> 
uh, <laughs> lucky you that you're with Courtney. And, uh, and so, uh, you know, she, she, she had her pick of everyone in America and she had to go to France to find the right match. So that's amazing. Met her in China. Yeah. <laughs> we met in China. Wow. Okay. <laughs> look at that. What a great photo. That is awesome. Awesome. You're all here. Thank you very much. Both of you. I'll let you guys Thank go. Thank you, Sri. Appreciate you. it. And uh, have a great evening uh, out there in California. You've got three more hours in Tucson yeah. also. Enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, folks, for being here. Another great show. Uh, we ran long, but uh, I love talking to you. I learned so much. I'm so grateful. My mom says I'm doing a great job. Uh, thank you, Amma. We miss you so much. Keep this up. Thank you. Renee says, how great your Amma is watching from India. Renee, thank you. Thank you to my mom. Thank you to everybody who's watching. I want to thank our wonderful sponsors. Yes, we have sponsors. What a what a shock that is. And our sponsors are FrontlineFoodTrucks.com. FrontlineFoodTrucks.com is all about how you can support at a very difficult time. You can support uh, frontline workers in, in the food truck industry who are also supporting the NYU Langone Hospital uh, workers. So your chance to support them, NY Food Trucks Association, Frontline Food Trucks, and we're so grateful a third party made the donation so that you don't have to uh, take any money away from uh, the uh, food trucks or from the uh, hospital workers. Uh, there's donations from La Colombe, from Sweetgreen, from Chobani, and a generous third party donor made the donation. I'm so grateful to them for supporting us. You're, if you go and make a donation on FrontlineFoodTrucks.com, you're, you're supporting me and my show. You're supporting food truck workers and you're supporting healthcare workers. How wonderful is that? We also have a very inexpensive rate card, as you can see. Uh, we have this global show and so inexpensive. Share your message with the world as we connect the world. Uh, that's our message to you. Just email me, sri at sri.net. You must have, uh, if you don't have a product that you want to advertise, maybe you want to do a, a, a birthday greeting, an anniversary greeting. You want to do a shout out to a small business you love or a, uh, a nonprofit you love. Here's your chance for such little money. Take a screenshot. Please share this. Our earlier, one of our first funders um, uh, was here uh, in Tim Sohn. And Tim said that Sri's sponsorships work. And I loved uh, that he said that. It was very generous of him. Here's his comment. I bought a one-week sponsorship and went from six to 30 people enrolled in my Survive with Live Video Founding Members Program. How awesome is that? And check out Tim Sohn and Sohn Social Media Solutions, the first man to give me money for this show. We have other people who have supported my other shows, but this was the first person to support this this particular show and we love our sponsors i also want to give a shout out to my friend stefan kaplan who has a new show coming out uh that's launching uh this is the second episode and he's going to india to talk via the internet to ranita roy a photographer in india uh this is thursday 11 a.m eastern make sure you catch this show with stefan the spin it social hour that sounds awesome doesn't it Thank you, folks. Uh, before I go, a couple of things. I'm reading two books I want to share with you. One is called The System oops, uh, by Robert Reich, the, uh, the great former uh, labor secretary. And he said, who rigged it and how we fix it? And my pal Anand Girdar Das um, has uh, the blurb in the back. And uh, Robert Reich, you've seen on television. And I'm going to invite him to come on to our show. And we also have this book I'm reading, I'm going to start a book club around this book. It's called Trillion Dollar Coach, the Leadership Playbook of Silicon Valley's Bill Campbell, who most of you have never heard of, but the book is by Eric Schmidt. He used to do a, every day, he used to walk, every Sunday he used to walk with Steve Jobs, and then on Monday with Larry uh, Page from Google. Incredible, right? He's the guy who made the ad, the famous Apple ad in 1984, about 1984. So if you get that book, we can do a book club. I'm going to I'm going to talk about that and would love to have more of you join. We are also always trying to experiment. And here on the screen, let me say hi, is a QR code so that you can subscribe. If you go to this, you get an invitation to a WhatsApp, not a group, a WhatsApp alert only, announcement only list so that when I'm live, you get an alert. So please sign up 
and uh, uh, just point your phone. If you have an iPhone, you can just point the phone right now. Or uh, if you have an Android, you know how to get a QR code, and you can get this. Otherwise, just email me, sri at sri.net, S-R-E-E -E at S-R-E-E.net. We want to get more of you to subscribe, to know when the shows are. Somebody asked me, what is my WhatsApp? So there it is. I'm giving that away, and I'm happy to do it because I want to connect with you. If I can help you in any way, if you want to turn your uh, in-person events digital, you want to improve your virtual events, improve your Zoom calls, uh, anything, we have folks who do that, and you can get a professional to help you uh, run your next event. Uh, we have a whole team that does that. So I'm very grateful to all of you for being here, for being part of my digital family. We love you all so much, and we're so grateful to everybody for being here. Um, and uh, Doug says, oh, Bill Campbell was an amazing man. And Joe said, yes, most libraries offer free books. Uh, and Joe says, I will never forget Harlan Coben's positive saying, you bring your own weather to the picnic. That's right, Joe. Everybody go back and watch on my YouTube channel. Please subscribe, youtube.com slash net, youtube.com slash net, so that you can get, uh, the you can see the Harlan Coben video uh, where he said, this great line, bring your own weather to the picnic. Bring your own weather to the picnic. I've not heard that before. I don't know if it's 100% original, but it's now it's his, and we're going to credit him for that. Uh, please uh, stay in touch, everybody. Uh, give me feedback. Give me, get, get, give me guest suggestions. And, um, uh, and uh, uh, we have so many people uh, saying thank you, including Tim. And Mark asked if there is a frontline food truck uh, type initiative in other states. I'm sure there is something that's happening. Uh, Courtney said she was sorry about the barking dogs at the end. Not a problem. We love dogs. And uh, we just love that everybody is here. Stefan says, thank you, Sri Ranita is a fantastic photographer that everyone should know about. And I can't wait to introduce her to all. All right, folks, that's the end. Thank you very much. An amazing week ahead to all of you. Uh, please stay safe. Uh, we know not everybody will get through this, but we collectively will get through this. Wherever you are in the world, I wish you peace. I wish you good health. And thank you so much for being here with me. Um, Sri at Sri.net, uh, at Sri on Twitter, at Sri.net on YouTube, Sri.net on Instagram. And please do connect with me on LinkedIn as well. So with that, I'll say goodbye to all of you and see you 9 p.m. Eastern tomorrow. 9 p.m. Eastern tomorrow for a conversation about leadership through crises. Thanks very much.